What is going on you guys? Kenny Valdez back at it again with another video. Hello my lady. So today we have another pros and cons video. These videos do extremely well because you guys like to know what are some pros and what are some cons for a specific vehicle. So in today's segment, we have the S2000, my lovely S2000 and my lovely lady over here. And in these videos, I like to give five pros and five cons of what I think are pros and cons of a certain vehicle. So without further ado, let's uh, jump into today's video. All right, I don't know if I should do pros first or cons. You got a quarter? All right, Asher's got a quarter. We're gonna flip it. What should we do? Heads. Heads what? Cons. Pros. Heads. Pros. All right. Tails. Cons. Tails. Cons. And it is heads. Whoa, mother! <laughs> All, right. On it. All right. So we'll start off with the pros. Pro number one. The timeless look don't see these cars too often on the road um, they're not like challengers Camaros Mustangs or none of that uh, they're, they're a pretty rare car to find and that's what's nice about it along with the timeless design so that's definitely a pro for me um, just look at all like basically the long front end the short rear end I mean everything about this car is just amazing the body lines when you see an S2000 it's like, oh my God, it's an S2000. It's not like, oh, here's another Mustang. No offense to Mustang owners or Camaro owners or anything of that nature, but it's just not a common car to see. All right, pro number two. Pro number two is this, this right here, the 9K rev limiter. This thing revs to the absolute moon. And it is a blast to drive since it does rev to the moon. I mean, you, this thing just keeps on going and going and it doesn't feel like it ever stops. Um, especially during straightaways and like twisties and stuff like that. Granted, we don't have many of the twisties down in Florida, but the ones that we do have, you know, I enjoy um, cause this thing just handles amazing and it just, it revs out to the moon. That's what I love about the car. It just revs out to the moon. The power band is there. It's not like it's a, it's a slow, single cam civic or anything like that um these things they they pack a little bit of a punch um and it definitely surprises you now granted it's not the most powerful car on today's market but it's definitely a fun one um i think this thing comes with a, like around 230 240 horsepower right around there um torque it's not a very torquey car low rpm range it, it, it is kind of kind of got to wind it out to really for it to go but once once you're above like four or five k it's 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 definitely a blast to drive pro number three so the third pro about this car is that there is endless aftermarket support granted i don't have many aftermarket parts on this vehicle all it really has for aftermarket mods is the fact that it has coilovers and some NK NTO3 wheels. That's about it for right now. I did do the AP1 to I did do the AP2 rear conversion, the rear bumper and front bumper as you guys can see here. So, oh, I almost forgot. Duh. It also has a Renegade, I believe, short throw shifter. So this thing is super short. I mean, it goes boom, 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 boom. It's, it's crazy. Some people don't like it. I absolutely love it. That's what matters anyways, right? That I love it, not anyone else, but yeah. It came with the car, I love that. But yeah, you can do pretty much anything to this car. If you want to wide body it, you can wide body it. If you want to bag it, you can bag it. If you want to turbo it, you can turbo it. I mean, anything that you can really think of, you, you can do to this car, which is nice. The aftermarket support on this is amazing. Pro number four. 
So another pro about this car is that they're pretty attainable. Not the most attainable things in the recent year, I'd say. They've definitely gone up in price, but they're still obtainable. You could still get one of these, I'd say AP1 S2000s for right around 15 grand to 20 grand, depending where you look, how many miles, what's the condition of it. Sometimes it could be less if it's a rebuilt title, but that's a discussion for a different topic if you want to go clean title or a rebuilt title. And another great thing is that they hold their value. And I think they're going to continue going up in price so a good time to get one is now. And for future references, if you want to sell it, you can definitely get your money back on them. So I guess it's a good investment if you're trying to look for a fun rear wheel drive sports car um, that doesn't diminish in value because these things are definitely going up in value. So if you're trying to get one, I try to get one pretty soon. Uh, for an AP2, you're probably looking at anywhere from 18 grand to 30 grand depending on, again, condition, mileage, and all that good stuff. So if you can grab your hands on one today, I definitely do it sooner rather than later at least pro number five all right so another pro about this car that i absolutely adore is this gauge cluster it's got like a racer feel like a race car feel cluster the ap1 and ap2 have similar clusters but they have like a little bit different layout um another nice feature about the s2ks is that they're sort of a push to start so it's, even though you still got to stick the key in turn it into on position and then push a the start right. yeah in order to start it but it's pretty dope it's yeah. pretty dope it's just very simple and it's very simplistic inside it's not that many buttons you know i really like that yeah too. and it's very like driver focused so like the s2000 has like a curvature right here where it kind of just points towards the driver which is pretty cool i like how they kind of hide the radio here so you don't really see it it's not you know doesn't make you lose focus of driving or it doesn't distract you while driving but yeah and that's probably it for the pros those are my five pros so let's get to the cons Alright, con number one. First con about this car is that everything in this interior rattles. I hate how all the plastics rattle. Like this rattles, obviously. You hear a lot of creaking when you're driving the car. There's a lot of wind noise. I absolutely hate that about this car um is that just everything rattles everything creaks it, it bothers the hell out of me but what are you gonna do it's a 20 year old car at this point con number two Con number one and con number two kind of goes hand in hand. When you sit in the car, right? You get in the car, you sit in it. It kind of feels almost claustrophobic, um, especially with the top up. I'll give you guys kind of quick visual reference here. All right, so you got the top up, right? There's no, like, you can't see anything through here. You only got this small little narrow window behind you. So there's a massive blind spot right over here and right over there, as you guys can see. It's it's definitely not big boy friendly. Um, there's not a lot of adjustability in this car being a little two-seater convertible. Also, I want to mention this steering column. The steering wheel does not adjust at all. There's no adjustability. This is not, not to get confused, there's nothing there. But yeah, there's no adjustability on the steering wheel, so it's fixed to one position. It's it's very claustrophobic if you're definitely a bigger guy or if you're over six feet tall. Con number three. So I guess one, two, and three kind of goes hand in hand. There is absolutely no storage space in this car. There's no, uh, glove box there um, there's nothing for the at least for the ap1 there's nothing here there's a cup holder here um that's about it there's no there's only one cup holder but even if you have a drink in here it's kind of in the way of you like shifting so you kind of have to like do this awkward kind of movement here there is two storages in this car and you got one in here which is very tiny and then there's like this little secret compartment that i always forget that i have that it's that's there 
but that's about it the, neither of them have much space in them so i guess that's another reason why this wouldn't be a great daily driver because there's not really storage compartments in this car and also i like to note that the trunk space the trunk has barely any space i mean if you're going to the track or if you're going out and you're a stancy boy and you're trying to fit an extra wheel in here good luck there's not much space in this car at all so that kind of sucks about this car also when you're sitting inside there's no unlock and lock button uh, on the master switch or anywhere else in the car so that kind of sucks so if you want to open this door and it's locked you have to kind of reach over grab the unlock button to open this door so kind of sucks con number four So the fourth con about this car, getting back into the interior, I guess. I guess every con about this car is an interior, which is kind of funny because I love the interior of this car, is the fact that um, second gear on the AP1s, not so much the AP2s, is that the fact that the second gear grinds. Um, if the car is cold and you don't have the car up to temp, second gear will grind, especially in the higher RPM range. Low RPMs, they won't do it, but like higher RPMs for my car does it. The trannies on, pause. The transmissions on the uh, AP1s aren't the greatest. Not too sure why, if it's the synchros or if the slave cylinder is, is not the greatest on this or if the transmission fluid is not the greatest in this right now. But something about the AP1s gearbox isn't the greatest. Um, they have a very notchy feel. I mean, granted, I do have a short shifter in this. I don't know. The gearbox on this car is not the greatest. Con number five. The last con I really have for this car is the fact that you can't really enjoy it in colder climates. This is more of like a spring slash summer car. These things are rear-wheel drive and they're convertible. So in order to enjoy a rear-wheel drive in something that's convertible it has to be in the nicer climates. So if you live like in northern states, um, where it's only nice for about three or four months out of the year. It's kind of like almost pointless to, drive, to have this car, unless if you don't mind that. So yeah, that's kind of like one of the cons I have about this car is that you can only enjoy it in like good climate weather. Granted, yeah, you can get a hard top for this and get some, I don't know, snow tires and stuff like that, but why would you want to drive an S3000 in the snow? I don't know. I would definitely not be doing that. What's up, Pablo? What's up, guy? You're ugly. You're looking beautiful. Oh, nice car. Thank you, thank you. I guess that's another pro about these cars is that you get a lot of compliments. At me, so. <laughs> you get a lot of compliments for these with this car. I had one person come up to me and was like, is that a Porsche? I'm like, no, it's not a Porsche. Well, it is a good looking car though. I give it that. I Man, if you don't want it, I'll trade you my TSX, bro. That wagon though, <laughs> it's a nice wagon, but can't do that. All right, guys, that's gonna sum up today's video on the S2000. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was my personal pros and cons, my five pros, my five cons about the S2000. If any other S2000 owners wants to pitch in on what their pros and cons of owning an S2000 is, comment down below. I like to hear what it is because it was kind of hard trying to find pros and cons about this car. Well pros not so much but cons it was it's mainly like stupid stuff like what i mentioned that i would complain about it but that's about it as always guys i'll catch you guys in the next one if you're not subscribed to the channel yet please hit that subscribe button i would greatly appreciate it it does so much for me leave a like too on that note i'll catch you guys in the next one i'm out peace